Hey Power Appers, this is Brian Knight from Pragmatic Works, and in today's video, we're going to show you how Copilot is going to integrate with your future apps, model driven apps specifically in this video, but also in Canvas apps. So stay tuned. We're going to show you how do we integrate Copilot into our model driven apps. So that comes in three steps we're going to do. We're first of all going to turn the feature on at an environment level. Second, we're going to turn it on at a table level. And then lastly, we're going to turn it on at a column level to say what columns we want to be involved in the search. So what it looks like is something like this. When you open up your model driven app or a Canvas app, there's a component for Canvas apps also, I can basically ask questions of my data. And you'll see that we'll play around with this after we get it all configured. But you can ask questions here and it will come back with answers. ChatGPT or Copilot is integrated in other ways as well. They have the ability to help you build applications. They have the ability also if you're in Dynamics to ask questions of your opportunities. But here we're going to ask specific questions about our data. These questions are really hard to answer unless you spend a lot of time building reports. So let's start with step one. Step one is to turn it on at the environment level. So I'm going to hit the gear box up in the top right. I'll go to the admin center. Now for this, you'll need of course admin rights to do this. I'm going to go to my developer rights. I say admin rights. You need admin rights for the specific environment to do this. Okay. So you don't necessarily need global admin rights or anything like that. I'll go to environments. These are the environments where I'm an admin of. And then after I choose my developer environment, let me find one of these guys. Okay, there it is. I'm then going to turn it on in the developer environment. And it comes in two steps we have to do here. Our first step is to hit settings up top. And we're going to go to product and we're going to go to behavior first and turn on the, the refresh rate of this site. How often are we getting updates, in other words? Now, that's the time this recording. Maybe if you're watching this a year from now in 2024, you may not need this step. This is, do you want to get the latest and greatest stuff? This is a preview feature at time of this recording in September of 2023. The next thing we'll do is we'll go to features after that. But let's start with the behavior. And I'm going to make sure that I have set this uh, model, this model different app release channel to monthly channels. I'm getting more up-to-date re refreshes of it. By default, it'll be set with twice a year in your case. But monthly means you're getting a little more of the, the, the features and latest and greatest. Then I'll go back to settings, then go back, back to product again, and then to features next. So I'm going to flip on these two settings you're seeing here. Allow Canvas editors to access it, and then also get AI uh, power from model different apps as well. I'm turning on both uh, to give me the full Copilot experience. The one we're really focusing on now is this guy right here. But both are kind of nice, nice to have. So while you're here, you can also turn on Dataverse searching. If you type a search parameters in, it will search multiple tables at one point as a little bonus thing you can do as well. After you're done, go to the very bottom and save that. So now you've turned it on at the environment level. Now to turn it on at the table level, we have to turn on two things. Track changes on our table and to have this table participate in search results also. So find your solution that has your table inside of it. Once you're in a solution, go to your table and then go to properties of that table. Once here, go to advanced options and ensure that track changes is turned on. Once you turn it on, you cannot turn it off. It's mainly used for doing things like change tracking and those kind of things. And then down below, appear in search results. Those two checkboxes need to be turned on at the time of this recording for this to work. All right, so that's step two done. Our final step is to turn it on at a view level. So if I go over to views for my table, this table is for a soup kitchen in my case, I'm looking for the view called quick find view. So it'll be quick find, active, whatever your table name is. So when you select this, this is what, what, what happens when you're doing quick find searches. And you'll notice in my case, it's just going to return like the event numbers. Not very, not very awesome, but we can actually change that and, and we can say custom and, and only and show me, hey, what kitchen is actually getting the most amount of soups and those kind of things. But what you really need right now is not necessarily the quick find form. What you really need is on the right side is where you see find by. And I'm going to hit this little edit right here and check what columns do I want to get extra intelligence to here. So I'll, I'll go ahead and select the kitchen and maybe the gallons of soup and uh, as well as the pounds of cheese and pounds of meat. And there's one more I want as well. 
and that will be total adults and total children served and to-go meals. Let's go with that, total meals, there we go. I'll just pick a few of these here. And then I'll get the volunteer leader as well. Now, there's only a certain amount of columns you can do this with uh, before it eventually uh, has issues. Once you're done, hit Save and Publish, and now these columns are now participating. If you want to use Dataverse searching, you can easily do that as well. All you have to do is go to the solution that holds these tables, I'm waiting for this to publish right now, and once you find a solution that holds the tables, you'll see a Dataverse search, search option right there. So to show this real quickly, I'll go to Overview here, then you'll see Columns Indexed, and just go to Manage the Index here, and just check any table that you want to participate in Dataverse searching. That's not required, but we're doing right now, but it is kind of nice. What it does is it gives you an extra box up top. So traditionally, you only see this little quick view form here, quick find form, but it also gives you this box right here where you can search n number of tables in one click. We are now ready to use this Dataverse now. So I'm going to go ahead and do a hard refresh of my application. There we go and I'll start to ask some questions. I want to find out some things that would be a little tougher to find. This is all um, uh, soup kitchen data, so I want to find out the average pounds of cheese served. I'll hit enter, but you can see on average we're serving 3.13 pounds of, of cheese. Now, as you can imagine, this would, be, this would be a really tricky thing to solve. You have to export this to Excel or create reports or create a chart to solve this problem, but now able to do this in an ad hoc fashion. Now, what happens if I make this query a little more complex? Let's say average pounds of cheese served, and I'll say grouped by kitchen. All right, so you'll see the kitchens that we have right here. The pounds of cheese, I think, is this guy right here, and we'll hit go. Now, also, while this is searching, you can give these searches a thumbs up or thumbs down. Occasionally, the uh, co-pilot will get a little bit wonky uh, with its results. In this case, you can see that uh, it did come back with good results. Uh, let's see, Orange Park is far by serving more cheese than Middleburg is. And, uh, and of course, the other kitchens aren't showing up here. So it's smart enough to eliminate records that don't have any cheese in this case. If I had asked it a more natural way and said uh, cheese served by kitchen, it might get a little confused there. So half the challenge is figuring out how to, to phrase these questions in a way that Copilot might be able to recognize. That's the challenge with, with any kind of AI, right? It's, it's just becoming smart on, on asking those questions. In this case, it's funny because it did not work as easily uh, when I was practicing it. So it's already gotten better since, since I practiced this a few, a few days ago. It's already getting smarter as I did this. That, that question gave me back a uh, no results. So I give it a little thumbs up in this case. It's also important that as you do this, if things aren't working the way you expect it, it, will, it could potentially work down the road also. So make sure you use these little thumbs ups and thumbs downs to let Microsoft keep on honing your data. I wonder what else I can ask it. How about I go and say, which volunteer organization has the most rows? Now, notice I'm asking it in such a way, the most rows. A little awkward, right? Before when I asked this question, it didn't know how to do that. But you can see Hibernia has the most, most times they've, they've, they've uh, volunteered in this case. But if you asked it you know, different ways, like uh, if you ask it like which volunteer organization has served the most, you might get a different answer. Again, it's, it's getting sharper and sharper as time goes on. This, this, this again, was not the way a couple, a couple days ago. So it's in that little bit of time, it's gotten smarter and smarter in here. So let's ask one more question here. Which kitchen? has served the most meals. All right. From this time, it's hallucinating, right? The kitchen is not Hibernia. It's basing contextual knowledge based on my questions I've asked earlier, and it's applying that context to here. So it does not know, you know, that I want kitchen now, this column right here. So it's getting a little bit wonky in this case, right? Hibernia is not a kitchen. So I want to ask it things like, uh, which kitchen uh, has the most rows, maybe. And maybe I get a little better answer now in this case. So it's, as you can see, it came back so fast, I was like, mm, that doesn't feel right. So this is a way you can kind of, you know, kind of better refine it in this case. And as you can see now, Orange Park has the most uh, times they've served with 21 rows. 
So when all else fails, try asking rows versus some more English-like kind of questions. At the time of this recording, this is only available in the US. However, it is going to be rolled out internationally, of course, as you can imagine, uh, very, very soon. So when you're watching this recording in your region, it might have already been deployed out to those regions also. All right, I hope you enjoyed this video on Microsoft Copilot's integration to Dataverse. If you want to see videos like this, also more like this, please do subscribe to this channel. And you'll find more training like this at pragmaticworks.com, where we have hackathons, virtual mentoring, boot camps, and also have recorded classes as well. Have a great day, and thanks again for watching.